Hello, it's Matthew here and we're looking at question 7 which is worth 50 marks. So we're shown a table with the weights of 10 dogs and their weights on day X which is the day that they were taken into a certain animal shelter and then their weights a number of days later which we're going to call day Y. So we're tasked with drawing a back to back stem and leaf plot to show this information. So let's have a look. The template for the stem and leaf plot has already been given to us in the question. And the numbers down the middle here, which is known as the stem, have already been written in. And now it's up to us to fill in the leaves, which are the numbers either side of the stem, which are going to be here and here. So all the first digits will be down the stem from 4 to 8. And the second digit of all the numbers will be either on the left hand side for the weights on day X or on the right hand side for their weights on day Y. So let's begin and we'll start with day X starting from A and working way up to J. So our first dog, the lightest dog, weighed 4.5 kg on day X. So as I said, 4 is in the stem, the first digit, which means that the second digit, 5, must go to the left of 4, which will go here. Now, I like to always cross off the digit up at the top in the table once I've written into the stem and leaf plot. This makes sure that I don't include any digit twice, and it also ensures that I don't miss out any digit. Of course, don't do a heavy line, just do a light line through the number, just so that it's clear that you've already included that number, and it doesn't need to be included again. So then we're going to do 4.9, so that's going to be 9 to the left of 5. And it is important that you start with the smallest number, closest to the stem, and then the further you go out from the stem, the larger the numbers get. So for example, 4.5, the 5 is closer in than 9, as obviously 4.5 is smaller than 4.9. So be careful there. The digits in the table we've been given are in order from lowest to highest. However, most of the time in the leaving cert, they are not in order and you're required to put them in order yourself. So I've written in the 5 for 4.5 and the 9 for 4.9. And now I'm going to do the same by putting in two 3s beside the 5, followed by a 5 and then finally a 7 for 5.3, 5.3, 5.5 and 5.7. That will look like this and then we have two weights that start with six so we have 6.7 and 6.9 as i said the seven must go closer to the six as it's a smaller number than nine and then the two heaviest dogs weighed 7.3 kg and 7.4 kg so that means i'm putting a three and a four along the row with seven as the stem so that will look like this and there we have all the weights of the dogs on day x represented on the stem and leaf plot now we have to do the same thing for the dogs on day Y. And the last row in the table shows the weights on day Y. So the lightest dog weighed 4.8. So it's just going to be one value in the row with 4 in the stem this time. And now it's going on the right hand side as it's day Y. So it's going to be a 4 in the stem and then an 8 as the leaf. That's the only one along the, four, the row with 4 in it on day Y. And then we have two values alongside 5. And that's going to be 5.4. So we're going to put 4 in. And then 5.5, .5, so we put a 5 in. So the 4 goes first, as obviously it's a smaller number, followed by 5. And once again, not forgetting to mark out all the numbers that we have in the table to make sure that we don't put any number in twice or forget any number. And then we have 6.1, 6.3 and 6.0. However, be careful here, as it's not an order anymore from lowest to highest, and we must put 0 first. So see how we have a 6.0 here? That must go first, as it's a smaller value than 6.1, which is smaller than 6.3. So we're not going to write 130 here, we'll write 013. And it's very important to have it in the correct order. So your row along 6 with the stem, so your row on day Y with 6 as the stem should be 013. And any other order is incorrect, so be careful there. So then we have three values on day Y that start with 7. So we have 7.0, 7.6 and 7.9. So once again, be careful here that 7.9 is included as your you as you have an 8.1 in between the 7.6 and 7.9 so don't forget about it so that's going to be a 0 6 and 9 alongside the row with 7 in the stem and then finally we have one value left which is 8.1 so we're going to put a 1 alongside the 8 in the row on the day y side and that's our answer for the back to back stem and leaf plot in a part one now one other thing to say is that you must include a key the key has been done for us here However, most of the time it won't be, so don't forget to include the key or you will lose marks. So that was worth 15 marks. And now we're going to have a look at A part 2. So A part 2 asks, what does the stem and leaf plot show about the weights of the dogs on day X and then on day Y? 
we can see that on day X, the weights mainly start with five, as there's four weights that start with five, and only two with the rest of the weights, and obviously none with that start with eight. And then on day Y, we can see that most of the dog's weight starts with either six or with seven, and there's also a dog with a weight that starts with eight, so the dog that weighs 8.1 kg. So we can clearly see that on day Y, the weight of the dogs has increased from what it was on day X. So the stem and leaf plot shows us that the weight of the dogs has increased from day X to day Y. And that's our answer for A part 2, which was worth 5 marks. Now let's have a look at A part 3. Here we're told that OR is the correlation coefficient between the weights of the dogs on day X and day Y. And now we have to pick the most likely value of OR from our list below, which is between minus 0 0.9, minus 0 0.2, plus 0 0.2 and plus 0 0.9. So a correlation coefficient, this tells us the strength of a relationship between two variables. Or two variables in this case are the weight on day X and the weight on day Y. And the correlation coefficient will fall between minus one and plus one. So if we think of it as a number line like this, with minus one being the lowest value that you can get, and positive 1 being the biggest value that you can get, and obviously with 0 in the middle. If you get a correlation coefficient of minus 1, or a correlation coefficient that's near minus 1, that means that there's a strong negative correlation between the variables. So we call that a strong negative correlation. If you get a correlation coefficient of 1, that means you have a strong positive correlation between both variables. If you get something that's close to zero but positive, we'll say around here, 0 0.1 or 0 0.2, we can call that a weak positive correlation. So it's still correlated, however, it's not quite as strong, it's a bit weaker. And then finally, if we get an answer that's close to zero but on the negative side, we can call that weak negative correlation. If we had a strong positive relationship between the dogs, that would mean that the heavier they weighed on day X, that would mean that the heavier they also weigh on day Y, the increase, they will still increase and they'll still be, you know, they'll still be a heavier relationship, so they're going up the whole time. Compared with a strong negative relationship, that would mean that the dogs are decreasing in weight from day X to day Y, and they're all decreasing. If it was weak negative, that would mean some of them might decrease, a few might increase, but most of them are decreasing, however, not all of them. And then weak positive would mean that most of them are increasing, however, not all of them. So let's go up and have a look. And we know from our answer in A part 2 that the weight of the dogs has increased from day X to day Y. So because it's increased, this indicates a positive relationship. And we can clearly see that nearly all of them are increasing, if not all of them. So that would mean that it's a strong positive relationship. So now let's place our minus 0 0.9, minus 0 0.2, 0 0.2 and 0 0.9 into the number line and let's figure out which one is closest to 1 and in other words has a strong would indicate a strong positive relationship. So minus 0 0.9 is somewhere around here. Minus 0 0.2 we can say is at the weak negative place there. Plus 0 0.2 can be at weak positive and then 0 0.9 can be somewhere up here. So we can clearly see that 0 0.9 indicates a strong positive relationship. So we're going to take 0 0.9 as the most likely value of R. So just to recap, the weights of the dogs on day X, there's an increase in all the weights between day X and day Y. So that means it indicates a positive relationship and as all of them increase, it's a strong positive relationship. So our answer is 0 0.9 as that's the closest one to 1. And a 1, if you got an answer of 1, that would mean it's a strong, it's a perfectly strong positive relationship. And 0 0.9 is closest to 1, so we're going to go with that. That's our answer for A part 3, which was worth 5 marks. Now let's have a look at part B of the question. So we're shown a table that shows the breakdown of the animals in the shelter. So we have cats and dogs and then male or female, and we have to complete the table. So we're gonna start by completing the total number of males. So we have five cats and 11 dogs, which indicates that we have 16 males in total, five plus 11. Now we know that in total, we have 40 cats and dogs, both male and female. So that means that if we have 16 males, we should have 40 minus 16 females as that will leave us with the remainder. And 40 minus 16 equals 24. So we know that we have 24 females in total, both cats and dogs. Now we know that we have 14 cats in total from this. Now let's work out how many dogs we have in total. 
So we have 40 cats and dogs, both male and female in total, as I said earlier. 14 of those are cats. So to work out how many are dogs, we can do 40 minus 14. And 40 minus 14 leaves us with 26. And finally, we need to work out how many female dogs we have, and then the table will be complete. So we have 11 male dogs, and in total we have 26 dogs, both male and female. So to work out how many are female, we can just do 26 minus 11, and then whatever we're left with will be the number of female dogs. And that will go in there. So 26 minus 11 is 15, so therefore we have 15 female dogs. Now we have our table complete, and that was worth 10 marks. So now let's have a look at C, and we're told that three different animals are picked at random from the animals in the shelter on that particular Monday, and we're asked to find the probability that the first animal picked was a cat. So remember, the probability of something is equal to the number of possible times that that particular outcome could happen. So in our case here, that's the number of times a cat could be picked, all divided by the total number of outcomes, which in our case here is the number of times any animal could be picked. So in other words, it's the number of cats over the total number of animals. So now let's go up and see how many cats we have and also see how many animals we have in total. And then we can put the number of cats over the total number of animals and that will be our probability. So we can see that we have 14 cats and 40 animals in total. So 40 cats and dogs, both male and female. We're gonna put 14 over 40. So when you're getting the probability of something, you put P and then in brackets, put whatever it is that you want to get the probability of. In our case, it's picking a cat. So we can put that equal to the number of cats, which in our case is 14, over the total number of animals, which is 40. So the probability of picking a cat is 14 over 40, and that can simplify down to 7 over 20. However, you will get full marks for 14 over 40, so let's stick with that but you would also get full marks for 7 over 20 as well, just to point out. So in C part 2, we're asked to find the probability that all three animals picked were male dogs. So what I'm going to do here is find the probability that the first animal picked is a male dog, that the second animal picked is a male dog, and that the third animal picked is a male dog. And once we find all the individual probabilities, I'll show you what to do with them. So this time, it's the number of male dogs over the total number of animals. So let's have a look. So we have 11 male dogs with 40 animals in total still. So the probability that the first animal chosen will be a male dog is 11 over 40. Now I'm going to do the same thing, except it's going to be that the second animal is a male dog. However, this one is a bit trickier, as you have to remember that you've already chosen the first animal to be a male dog. So as a result, you have one less male dog and one less animal in total. So we did have 11 male dogs, however, one has already been chosen, which we chose first. So that means we're left with 10 male dogs. Now we had 40 animals in total. We've taken out one of the male dogs, which we chose first, which leaves us with 39 animals in total. So the probability that the second animal chosen is a male dog is now 10 over 39. So it isn't 11 over 40 again, it's 10 over 39 as we've already taken out one of the male dogs, which we chose in the first place. Now, you may be able to tell already what the probability is that the third animal chosen is a male dog. However, I'm going to explain it again anyway. So now we've already chosen two male dogs. So rather than 11 minus 1, it's now 11 minus 2. As we chose a male dog first and a male dog second. So that's 11 minus 2. And the minus 2 is for the two male dogs that we've already chosen. And that leaves us with nine male dogs. And we've chosen two male dogs, so that leaves us with 40 minus two animals in total. So we're left with 38 animals in total. So the probability that the third animal chosen is a male dog is nine over 38. So now we have the probability that, that the first animal chosen is a male dog, that the second animal chosen is a male dog, and that the third animal chosen is a male dog. So now you're asking, what do we do with these individual probabilities? The answer is to multiply them by each other. And the reason we're doing that is because we want them all to happen together at the same time. So it's not that the first animal is a male dog or the second animal is a male dog. In that case, it would be plus because we want them all to happen at the same time. Like you want the first animal to be male and the second animal to be a male dog 
and the third animal to be a male dog, you must multiply all the probabilities together. So if that said or, so that, that was the first animal to be a male dog, or the second animal to be a male dog, or the third animal to be a male dog, you would plus them together, you would add them up. However, as I just said, it wants the first animal to be male dog and the second animal to be male dog and also the third animal to be a male dog. So as a result, we multiply all the individual probabilities by each other. And so multiplying those by each other, we can do that on the calculator. So 11 over 40 multiplied by 10 over 39 and multiplied by 9 over 38. So the answer is 33 over 1976 but it wants the answer in decimals to three decimal places. So I'm going to click S to D and this changes it from a fraction to a decimal. I get 0 0.0167004. So to three decimal places, that's 0 0.107. The seven after the six will round the six up to a seven. So my answer is 0 0.017. So the probability that all three animals picked were male dogs is 0 0.017. That's my answer for C part two. C part two and C part one were worth a combined five marks. Now let's have a look at part D. So part D tells us that nine female cats were put in nine separate pens and we have to work out the number of different possible arrangements. So all the different ways that the nine cats could have been arranged. So I'm gonna use the box number method here, which looks like this. So I have nine boxes here. Think of those as the nine separate pens. So I have nine female cats starting off. Let's think of it. In the first pen, I have nine different options to pick from, as in I have nine cats to pick which one to put into the first pen. So let's write nine into the first box here. So that means in the first pen, I have nine options. Now in the second pen, I no longer have whichever cat I picked to put into the first pen, which leaves me with eight cats to pick from. So I have eight options for the second pen, so let's write in eight. And now for the third pen, I no longer have the cat that I put into the first pen or the cat that I put into the second pen, so I'm left with seven cats left. And then I have six cats to choose from in the fourth pen, five in the fifth, four in the sixth, three in the seventh, two in the eighth, and finally I'll only have one cat left to choose from in the final pen. So I have nine on the first, eight in the second, and so on, all the way down to the final pen, pen number nine, where I just have one option, which is the last cat left. So now I'm gonna find how many different arrangements that we could get. So now to work out the number of different possible arrangements, I'm gonna multiply all of these by each other. So nine by eight by seven by six by five by four by three by two by one. Now you may recognize this as actually that's equal to nine factorial. So 9 factorial is equal to exactly this, 9 by 8 by 7 all the way down to by 1. It's the same with any factorial, so 6 factorial is 6 by 5 by 4 by 3 by 2 by 1. 3 factorial is 3 by 2 by 1. You know, so 9 factorial is just 9 by 8 by 7 all the way down to by 1. So I can rewrite that as 9 factorial. And I can do 9 factorial on my calculator. You just click in 9, and then click shift, and then click the button that has x to the power of minus 1. Make sure you've clicked shift already, as you'll see x exclamation mark above the x to the power of minus 1. That means x factorial. And I get 362,880. Now, if you're not really sure about the factorial thing, that's okay. You can also type in 9 by 8 by 7 by 6 by 5 by 4 by 3 by 2 by 1. And you should also get 3, 362,880. And that's our answer for part D. And that's worth 5 marks. So part e says that 10 animals left the shelter by the end of the week and no new animals had been brought in. We're also told that if you picked an animal at random at the end of the week, the probability of picking a dog would be 11 over 15. Then we're tasked with working out how many cats left the shelter during the week. So the first thing is, we had 40 cats in the shelter at the start, okay? We had 40, now 10 left. So now we have to work out how many animals we have left in the shelter, so that's simple. We had 40 and 10 left, so that's 40 minus 10. That leaves us with 30 animals in the shelter. So now we have 30 animals in the shelter and we know that the probability of picking a dog is 11 over 15. That means 11 over 15 of the animals in the shelter are dogs. So now to work out how many dogs we have, I can multiply 30 by 11 over 15 and I can do that on my calculator and I get 22. 22 dogs remaining in the shelter. 
We have 30 animals in the shelter and 22 of those are dogs. So now to work out how many cats we have, as remember we only have cats or dogs, we can just take away 22 from 30, that gives us 8. However, be careful because the question asked how many cats left the shelter, not how many cats were left or not how many cats were remaining. So now let's see how many cats we had before the 10 animals left and whatever the difference is between the cats that we had and the 8 cats that we have left now, that will be the number of cats that left during the week. So we can see here that we had 14 cats and now as I said we have 8. So we can do 14 minus 8 and that's 6. So that means 6 cats left the shelter during the week. That's our answer, 6 cats left during the week. So that's the answer for part E, which was worth 5 marks. And that's the final part of the question and the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope I helped.